I guess it's time, isn't it, then, to call this meeting to order? Yeah. Let's do it. Let's call this meeting to order. Uh, welcome, everybody. It looks like we have a, 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 a really nice agenda in front of us, a couple of uh, interesting little uh, um, um, items to to discuss here under Trex rule. That'll be fun. Um, I'd like to I can't wait to hear the discussion on 65 and then I think what do we have a couple of a couple of comments from from people to read um, um, about that. Um, so I, I hope we have a good day um, in, in looking this over um, 65. There's a couple of references that I'd like to look at um, um, in it about the course examinations that may be that may be something that comes off of uh, removing the the need to identify uh, people with um, 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 uh, um, IDs. Thanks. That was a really hard word at, at 10 o'clock in the morning, I suppose. Um, but but I can't wait. I, I can't wait to hear everybody's opinion to see what it is that we're going to uh, provide to Trek, if anything, with this uh, this recommendation. And then the same with uh, uh, point seven two. So so let's get on it. I'm I'm missing our fearless leader this morning. I'm sorry that he doesn't have uh, connectivity. I know that he worked on that bill uh, in order to make sure that he. It sorry. Looks like working to to get on. So he just he just logged in, and uh, I think we're working to get audio and camera. So he should be here shortly. Oh good. All right. Is that Jen Wheeler talking? That, that was Abby. <laughs> oh excuse me, Abby. I did want to say. There's Bill now. Thank God you're here, Bill. It was all going to <laughs> pack in a hand Brian, basket. You, ju you just keep right on going, Brian. I'll listen from back here. Uh-huh. All right. You just, you know, whatever string you need to pull, that's totally fine with me. Uh, Jen, were we going to Wheeler talk at all today about um, um, uh, Trek's award for the legal update and legal two classes that was received? Uh, probably not on our agenda but something that probably should be recognized. Congratulations to you and your staff for that. Um, that was pretty cool. Definitely a, a team effort with Vanessa and Summer and Groovy and Abby and just, you know, it was a lot, a lot of combined effort and it was exciting. And Vanessa and I accepted the award in Chicago a couple weeks ago. And for those who don't know, it was the Arella's Continuing Education Post-Licensing Education Award for our latest Legal Update 1 and 2 courses. Well, congratulations. And I know everybody on that, uh, that group worked hard on it. And uh, that's pretty neat to see uh, when I saw that on, on Trek's website. That was, that was pretty neat. Well done. Um, Kind of cool, huh, Candy? Well, yeah. yes, that also <laughs> did not mean to exclude the two of you in our writing. Right. Was, well, yeah, the, the people who wrote some I, of that stuff. But, yeah, but, uh, we're, just, we're just the peons. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, I I didn't I didn't hear any any exclusion in that. The word team I think fell fell real um you know it, it hit. So um thanks for all that hard work and it was pretty neat being recognized that way or seeing Trek yeah. recognized that way. So congratulations. Um so I think that's all I got, Bill, unless uh you want to take us on a tour of your, you know, your mobile office there. No, you're doing just fine. <laughs> Okie doke. At some point, do we need to, uh, um, um, who's going to do housekeeping stuff? It's me. Vanessa is. Vanessa is. Do you want to do that? Do we need to uh, take attendance before we do that, um, Vanessa? We can. Looks like Bill's shaking his head. <laughs> okay. Bill? Yes, present. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Bye. <laughs> I'm here. Okay. Cindy? Morning. Here. Kara? Here. Rita? Carl? Here. Candy? Here. Mandy? Ruben? He's waving. He's waving. Okay. Yeah. Cassie? Here. Clea? I don't see our um, commission li liaison, uh, Commissioner Russell, here just yet. I think she will be here. All right. Um, I'll cover housekeeping, my favorite agenda item. Um, so it's a hybrid meeting as we can all see. For those in the room, that's our mic. You don't need to 
to yell, especially because we're all pretty close to it. But remember, it'll get you on those side conversations that'll <laughs> highlight them. <laughs> the rest of the meeting will drown out. So, um, and then for those who are virtual, um, you can see there's a lot of people in this meeting, but that's because we're doing it via, this is our way of uh, being able to live stream these meetings. So there's a lot of folks that are logged in that do not have audio or camera access. Um, and that's just because this is our way of live streaming. We did it last time as a test run, pretty successful. So we're able to do it, um, you know, hopefully forever, right? Um, and then uh, if you are virtual and you're a member, you, it looks like you've all got your cameras on. We ask you to keep your cameras on. Um, best to stay muted uh, unless you are actively talking because that just helps with the background noise. Um, that said, if you have something to say, you can unmute and just speak up or you can raise your hand and we try and watch for the hands. Um, they now put the hands in order. This will be important for um, the combo of Byron and Bill. They now put the hands in order so you know who's in first, second, third in line. Um, don't forget to unraise your hand. And again, for us, it's at the bottom on this screen. It's that little hand. Um, but I think on my computer, it's usually at the top. So it really depends on if you're using, I don't know, actually. Teams doesn't have any consistency uh, your screens all look different than our screens. It's confusing, but I love it. It's great. Um, and that's it, I think, for, for of you are here and you need to sign in, sign in. And that's it. Thank you for that, Vanessa. Um, do we want to uh, um, address the the uh, meeting minutes from July 8th? Any, any um, uh, amendments that need to take place to those? Then uh, do we want to um, um, approve those minutes? Wait, hold on. Okay. Mike, did you, were you able to get back on those? Yes, I did. Uh, Thank you, in Mike. the last week, I submitted those as approved. Okay. So we're good on in terms if you want to approve them. We haven't sent them. You haven't sent them. Okay, we'll do them next time. I'm sorry. I think this okay. is this is this. So, yesterday afternoon or yesterday sometime, isn't that true? Was it yesterday that we received an email with a a public comment on um, proposed changes to five thirty five six five? Friday. I think on Friday. It was on Friday. Friday. Okay. And uh, um, do we need to read that out loud or do we just have it there? So if you're referring to the one, it was the Rita Santa Maria mm -hmm. comment. Yeah, so we have we have that um, under the, so everyone received that. That was a supplement that was sent out. And we have that under the uh, public comments for non-agenda items. Um, it's possible, and and we can we can look at it there. I think it's possible the second part of her comment may actually have to do with agenda item six, um, so we can kind of think about it in in that light as well. Okay. Um, I think the first part we already addressed. Yeah, the right. first part. Yeah. yeah, you're right. That right. was done before. Um, but it, yeah, the second part would be uh, under agenda item six, I believe. Uh, any other comments received? That's all we got um, under five. Um, in a moment, um, we've handed out a comment from Kalea, um, who's not able to be here today for item six. Um, we've handed that out here, and then we'll share it on the screen. I think Vanessa is going to re just read it into the, the record um, when we get to that agenda item. OK. Then should we move, if there's nothing else under any any public or written comments, then should we just move on to uh, um, item six? Discussion uh, uh, regarding responsibilities and operations of providers of qualifying uh, courses under 535.65. Shall we do that? Sounds good. Okay. Um, and and whoever put this together, thanks for the 
Thanks for the rule actually written out. I appreciate you doing that. Um, it made it really hard for me. I don't know about the rest of you looking. I know I know you've got the red line sitting there, but I, I had the, uh, the, the actual rule sitting in front of me and sat there and flipped pages back and forth so I could reference things. Uh, it looks like there's a couple of different changes. One to G presentation of courses uh, under, uh, uh, what is that, G? Um, um, is it uh, mm -hmm. B? B just says check or, or verify the identification of each student as the class sign up um, um, when signing in for each subsequent meeting of the class. Yeah, there it is right in front of us. Thanks for putting that up there. Um, and then under under um, C, we see for a qualifying non-elective course, continued education, classroom delivery course delivered through the use of technology where there are more than 20 students registered for the course that the, um, uh, the pri provider will also uh, uh, monitor, um, um, use a monitor for every 20 students uh, participating in the course to verify identification of each students and monitor activity of each students and facilitate questions for the instructors. And then, then of course, the deleted uh, in there. So um, should we just focus on those parts right now? Well, that's kind I think of, so, and I think that's, that's also where one of the public comments was from Rita yeah, about yeah, the, the 20, 20 student role. Yep. But the, so I'm curious of how we're limiting it now to 20, where before we had a proctor for each site with more than 20 and it didn't specify the amount. What's the thought process behind that? Jim, do you want to talk about that? Yeah, where um, did that come I think that to some degree, we kind of took that from the language that already existed um, that was stricken in the little tube. But, um, but also just some type of oversight is recommended uh, just based on if you've got, you know, 100 students, should there be some type of limitation or um, recommendation that you have somebody to monitor participation? You know, back in the early days, we talked about people who were taking CE and driving or taking courses from you know, in their pajamas from their bed. And so this is not necessarily like the 20 is just kind of something that we took from you guys, but I think we're open to any kind of discussion on that. Uh, or if you have other ideas, but what are, what as educators are your thoughts in terms of monitoring and uh, ensuring participation and engagement and uh, that kind of thing? Well, I def definitely think there needs to be monitoring without any doubt, and I doubt any of us would think that we don't need monitoring. But monitoring at 20 students, so if we had 40, that'd require two monitors. You know, obviously we can multiply up the five monitors for 100. I wonder if we couldn't just put the responsibility to ensure sufficient monitors on the school and not put a number or on the provider and not put a number next to it. Is this a good time for Kalea's comment? Yeah, and it, it, yeah I was yeah. going to say, I'm happy to read Kalea's comment in um, whenever you want me to. Now would Please. be a good time, yeah. Okay. I'd like Pat? to see it. And you've got some hands up after that. Okay. I'm, <laughs> gonna, I'm going to take my glasses off to read this. All right, good afternoon. I hope this message finds you well. Uh, okay, I'm not sure we really need all of this part, but I'm just going to read it. Unfortunately, I will be attending a conference abroad and won't be able to join the meeting on Monday. I'm not sure if my comments are able to be issued. Um, however, I've, I'm going to skim through this part. I've, I've carefully reviewed the proposed amendments to 535.65, specifically the requirement for a monitor for every 20 students in a qualifying or non-elective continuing education classroom course. While I fully support the objective of ensuring student engagement in classroom and virtual broadcast settings, I must express my opposition to this particular amendment. The proposed ratio of one monitor per 20 students creates logistical and financial challenges for providers. For larger classes, staffing multiple monitors is simply not feasible given the costs and resource limitations many providers face. While we discussed this agenda item and asked for the team 
uh, for the staff team to bring back a recommendation adding additional monitoring support in lieu of removing the requirement of photo identification was not the intent. And I think we I think will unintentionally pose a bottleneck for most providers for both live virtual broadcast and live classroom. It is my belief that there are alternative methods to achieve the goals of student participation and verification without imposing such a stringent monitor requirement. For example, integrating technological tools or enhancing the role of the primary instructor, proper sign-in protocols, and putting the onus on the provider to include some oversight functions could provide an effective solution without burdening providers. One monitor is plenty enough to ensure participation and continuity. I appreciate the committee's dedication to maintaining high standards and course delivery and engagement, and I am open to exploring different approaches that address these concerns more practically. Thank you for considering my input, and I look forward to discussing this further in future meetings. That's from Kalea. Great. Perfect. Thank you for that. Do you want to discuss that, or uh, 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 shall we hear from Candy and, and uh, Ruben and Mike first? I'd kind of like to hear from Candy and Mike and Ruben. Uh, Can I first? OK, you are uh, echoing that and I'll just break it down lower to small individual providers. If I'm if I'm teaching a class of 60 people and I have to pay three monitors, that ultimately means the people in the class are also going to have to pay more to take the class. So I think from a financial standpoint, I, the idea of oversight absolutely needs to happen. But from a financial standpoint, passing that down, it's just going to you know trickle trickle down to the actual student, and then the, the cost per course is going to go up. So I think that twenty number is probably a little bit restricting on on large corporations, champions, et cetera, and and and. Um, you know, associations, they may not have six people that can staff 120 people on a Zoom. They may not physically have that many people in their in their staff to do it. I know my Fort Hood Association, we have three people. So there's no way we could, you know, facilitate a large class. So I think the 20 is is the hang up, I would say. Thank you, Mr. Great. Vice Chairman. Mm, thanks for that, Candy. Appreciate it. Uh, Ruben. Thank you. Good morning, all. Uh, Mr. Chair, you moved a little too fast for me this morning. I had a comment to make on another page before you got to that. Oh, I'm so sorry, Ruben. Uh, please fine. forgive me you're for that. No, no, you're fine. You're fine. I just, if I may. Oh, please. Uh, if I may. Uh, I want to go back to page one of five. All right. And, and someone can help me understand this, and then I'll make a comment to the, back to the 20. So on page one of five, uh, it's item... Um, where am I here? Towards the bottom, uh, it's it, number three. A provider may remove a student and and not award uh, credit if a student does not participate. How do we do that? How do we make them participate on a on a um, Zoom call, if you will, uh, other than they're sitting there in the pajamas and they're there, they're present, they're online. But how do you <clears throat> how do you do that? Number one, number two, <clears throat> it says something about uh, they can also be removed from the class uh, uh, after given a warning. Um, I can't remember the last time anybody warned me for anything. Uh, they may. So I've heard people say, uh, "I'm going to put you on notice," but the word "warning" kind of just sticks out to me. You know, I, I remember telling one of uh, an, an agent one time. I'm going to warn you about this. It's like, ooh, I'm scared. You know, uh, I don't know what the warning means, but I, I've, you know, I read this page per page, and these two items kind of just stuck out to me. And I just wanted to know if there's any thought about, and probably not because there was a, there was nothing mentioned in it. But rem, how do you remove someone for the lack of participation on a Zoom call? I guess we may need to rephrase the word participation, but you know, more likely you have to pay attention. And if you're falling asleep or if you're <laughs> doing something else, being on the phone or we're doing something else, it's obvious <clears throat> to see on the monitor. And um, I guess that's what they're referring to. So we may need to rephrase the word the participation. And as far as giving out the warning, a lot of times we have a monitors who, you know, monitor the 
the monitoring the class besides the instructors, and they usually send a message, private message to those people who does not have a cameras on, who's talking, mm -hmm. who's doing something else. And I guess that will kind of refer as a warning. Um, if they don't, they, for, they don't get to see it, a lot of times that their association usually call them mm -hmm. on the phone telling, hey, you need to stop doing whatever you're doing, pay attention. And then um, I think if they continue to do that, they'll kick them out. Mm -hmm. Okay. OK, that makes sense. Uh, second thing in reference to uh, the, the number of people. I'm sorry. Uh, uh, is the word monitor replacing the word proctor? Uh, it, it was mentioned uh, early proctor, now it's mentioned monitor. Yeah, so and, and maybe just to take a step back, um, kind of overall to talk about sort of the general reason for the changes, if you remember, um, the request from the committee last time was to take a look at the identification um, language for the, the photo IDs. Right. Uh, you know, maybe reword that to be a little more broad, to be more inclusive of technological capabilities that are here today that maybe weren't around 10 years ago. Um, and then to remove the proctor language from the rule. Um, so in this section right here, um, we, we have to make some change because we do have to remove the proctor language from, from this, this rule language here. Um, so, uh, so that's been done across the board. You'll see that in 535.65, I think it's uh, 70 and then 72 as well. Um, and then, but monitor was there, um, exists currently, that language exists currently, and, and currently under the rule, it's for a broadcast origination site. Um, the proctor language was for a remote site. Okay, thank you. And the last thing is I agree with um, Kalea's comments on the, the number of students. Thank you. Ruben, I wonder, and and um, maybe Abby, since um, um, I always you know, consider you to be the, the, the rule guru, um, <laughs> Someplace I heard the word engaged when it came to uh, yes, participation in class. Is that someplace else? And I'm just, or am I just making that up? That students must be engaged in class. I don't think that's in a rule language. I don't think so. It's not ringing a bell. Um, uh, it's a term we use, right? Right. So uh, instructors. <laughs> I would. Yeah, I kind of, I kind of like that word. <laughs> So I don't know if that would um, make you more comfortable, Ruben, if it said uh, uh, something. Uh, it's also participation. Right. Yeah, it does not participate. Maybe if they were engaged in class, because in Zoom, this is engaged. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I do want to clarify one thing. I think what Ruben is referring to is uh, existing rule language that was not part of any of the red line changes. Before That's you. right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but just something, I mean, um, um, Ruben makes a valid point. I just wanted to uh, further that comment, but we'd have to have another proposal. For, yeah, for <laughs> thank that, you. I suppose. Um, um, uh, thanks, Ruben. Uh, yes, sir, Mike, thank thanks for being so patient. Uh, yeah, about the uh, the comments regarding 20. Um, I like the first step back and, and think about what is the purpose of the education? Um, why are we all here? Uh, and it's merely not to just check a box, right? We want these agents to learn these things to uh, be able to act the way that the, the rules state um, for the benefit of the, the consumers. Uh, and none of this is to make a profit. Mm -hmm. So I want to start with that. Uh, I think. Uh, 20 is a is a fairly low number. Uh, however, having a number in place, I think, is critical. Um, maybe it's something that, uh, you know, the the primary instructor, uh, they should be able to teach a certain amount without a monitor, whether that's 20 or that's 30, whatever that number happens to be. Um, and then that number would subsequently double with each monitor that's involved. You know, I think most parents would have an uproar if their children were in a class more than 18 per teacher. Um, now, these aren't children we're talking about, though they do act like it sometimes. 
right? Um, we all do. We all have our moments. Uh, but I think it's critical that we have a number in place here and not leave it up to uh, each individual provider to determine how many people they think they could properly monitor. Uh, I've sat in classes online and in person with hundreds of students, and they weren't being properly monitored. Uh, there were plenty of people doing other things, and the primary instructor, the only one in the room, uh, whether Zoom or in person, wasn't able to pay attention to everybody. Um, there's Zoom classes that happen right now uh, for real estate that have 300 plus students in it. Uh, and there's just no way to keep track. It's impossible. Uh, we have some fantastic instructors. Some of them are in the room. There's no way to keep track of hundreds of students. Um, even going beyond 20 or 30 is difficult. So let's think about what that number should be that makes sense. Um, that's not an overburden on the providers, but in the same hand, we're paying attention to why we're here in the first place, uh, and that is provide uh, great and adequate education. That's all I got. The maximum number that appears on a monitor is like 45, mm -hmm. right? Right. So like, and then it goes over to the next page. So it will be hard to flip over to the, the following pages, maybe perhaps make it to 45 instead of 20. I agree. I mean, I would just like to echo what everyone has said is I do think that we need to impose a specific number. Mm -hmm. There has to be, I think 20 is too few, but I, I love this idea. However many you can monitor on one page, you can easily pay attention to what they're doing. But if you're having to flip through these pages as a provider and present course material, how do you do both of those things at once, right? So I, I do, I think that there should be a specific number in place. Of of monitors or, or that we, uh, there should be a monitor if we hit a certain number. Students to monitors, yeah. So a specific. So have a ratio specifically for that. Mm -hmm. um, so I have a, I have a, I have a question. First of all, when technology changes, if we put a number there, we're going to have to adjust that number. If we remember when Zoom first came out, you could only see fifteen or twenty people on a yep. screen. Yep. And now, based on the technology of what you have, you can see fifty or more. I don't know that an instructor can monitor fifty people. I, I do know those of us that own schools are in it for profit, Mike. Uh, so I, I will say that some of us are here for profit. So profit is important to us and it will eliminate. Obviously, a board is not here for profit. But others of us are. I, I have a problem with a number because I think whatever number we put there, we are going to be chasing ourselves every couple of years and adjusting that number. I do think that the provider has to use some common sense and we have to trust the provider to do what they're supposed to in providing a monitor. I definitely think that we need monitors or mon a monitor or monitors based on the course. I do not believe that we should have a number that specifies for every X number of students you have to have a monitor. Can I call on myself? I think I can. Um, Bill, I agree with you there. I think there's a couple of choke points in classes coming into and out of classes, or if um, uh, an exam is offered at the end of the class. I think that creates a, 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 a time period where additional monitors may be necessary. But in a class of 100, for example, uh, there's periods of time where, where uh, um, almost the instructor has it. You know, unless there's other things going on in the classroom, then there's a good chance that those students are participating the way that they're supposed to. They're there for a reason. Uh, uh, some of them just to check the box, unfortunately, to get their education done, and others to learn. Uh, uh, we can't we can't force people to learn. We can we can request that they check a box, that they participate that way. Um, I think that it would be up to the uh, the provider to make decisions that after a certain level number of students in the room that they may they may need to provide additional monitors but i don't know if uh, in a in a um, a 30 hour course if you know if a, you had a room of 100 people 
that you would need five monitors the whole time. So I think that that's up to the discretion, in my opinion, of the of the uh, the provider. But if you wanted to have a, a a floor and said that you know after 20, 20 students who are enrolled that you have a monitor, I would agree with that. But the number of monitors that are required uh, thereafter may be dependent upon the the students in the room. Uh, the material being taught and the activities that are that are going on in that particular uh, classroom as to whether or not there needs to be additional support or monitoring uh, going on in the classroom. So I say I uh, leave that to the discretion of the of the uh, provider or the instructor uh, as to whether additional monitors are needed for particular classes. That's my opinion. Yeah, I make a suggestion and my suggestion would be whether or not the committee agrees with it or not would be to strike the words for every 20 students participating in the course, which were added words, by the way, from paragraph C A or C1, excuse me. I guess they took the one out of it. Are you making a motion? Is that a I'm making a suggestion. There's other people that want to talk. After everybody talks, I'll definitely make a motion. I okay. don't want oh, to I cut didn't off see, Mike. I didn't Mike see the hand up. Yeah, excuse me, Mike. Um, it's right there in front of me. I don't know why I didn't see it. Mike, um, you want to jump in? Yeah, absolutely. And, and I totally understand the profitability part. Um, I own a school as well, and um, if it wasn't making money, it wouldn't exist. Um, but I'm still in favor of some language. 20 is definitely a very low number. Um, I would argue that uh, being reliant on technology changes is is important. We shouldn't uh, make a decision based off of Zoom. Uh, however, how many people could one truly pay attention to uh, provide instruction um, and ensure that they are engaging? Um, I think the number would have to at least be 40. Um, you know, and it's not one monitor per 40. Um, it would be the instructor, the primary instructor could handle 40. And then for every additional 40, a monitor would have to come in, something to that effect. Um, where it's not so uh, uh, extreme as 20, um, but some number to be in place. It is, as much as many folks would do a great job of, uh, of doing it, we have, there's a lot of providers, Jennifer. I don't even think we hundreds, hundreds of providers. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, and I think oh. having a number would be the benefit of, of everyone to include the students who are paying for these courses. Well, Mike, would you would it, would would you be OK with the language that's in uh, two uh, where it says with more than 20 students? I know that's for the verification of identifications. But but to say a monitor is required uh, in a, a a course with more than twenty students, or do you want a if, specific ratio? Even twenty is a low number for that. Um, I think that could be raised. Um, twenty is a, is an awful low number, um, but I think a ratio at some point comes into play, um, and it's not unheard of. Uh, there's many other uh, licensing. Uh, authorities have education um, that have ratios, so it's not a new concept. Um, it's it's certainly common. Jennifer. Yeah, I just have um, a comment because we do have the subject matter experts in the room. And what has your experience been as far for those of you who are instructors and who teach Zoom classes? And um, how do you what does it take to make sure that your students' questions are getting answered? Or even in your experiences as a student of, you know, when you're taking your CE and Mike and Byron, you have alluded to some of the courses that you've taken, you know, <clears throat> large volume. Have you ever tried to ask a question and not gotten an answer? Like, what are the, <laughs> what are the key components to making sure that there is some kind of, uh, responsibility and reaction to the students participating in the course. Maybe that's a number, maybe it's not a number, but um, are there other ways that 
that people trigger responses to questions. Just curious. So, so I, I can only speak for the courses we teach at RECT and we have a monitor in every single course, regardless of how many students we have in it. Their job is to call forward questions and make sure the instructor sees the questions, because I will tell you, at being an instructor, it's very difficult to see the chat questions, to watch the hands and everything else. So I do agree a monitor is important, and that's how we ensure that they get their questions answered. We've removed many people from our classes after giving them a warning and saying, you've got to participate. You cannot be cooking lunch or dinner or whatever in the world that you're doing during the middle of the class. Um, and, and then we'll remove them. And I've not had a complaint on that yet. And I think we're in accordance with what the rules are. So Mike, I agree with you. We need a, a baseline number and maybe it's whatever the baseline number is. I, I don't know that I'm in favor of putting a ratio there. Bill, you gave me nightmares thinking about people I've had in class. <laughs> we can yeah. we can make some lists. You know, I, I had a woman go under a hairdryer one time at the beauty parlor and I didn't want her to have, have her removed. I wanted to watch what was going to happen. But unfortunately, <laughs> uh, uh, she she had to take that class over. Uh, um, whether you call that participate or engaged, I don't know which, but I would say that neither of it was happening. Uh, and that was the monitor that caught that. Um, I happen to be a, a, a Zoom instructor, um, uh, probably to the tune of uh, uh, eight or so courses per month. And uh, I really like it. I like it for a lot of reasons. I like that it has the ability to share documents and go to different sites and things like that. But I am greatly um, um, thankful for the, the the person who participates in the room with me, the monitor who does that. Uh, if it weren't for her, um, uh, I'm sure things would be a lot more bumpy. Uh, as an expressive person, um, um, I don't look at myself. I look at the, the 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 you know the facial expressions of the people that are in the classroom, and I'm I'm constantly moving from screen to screen to look at them. Like I watched Barbara come in the room. It's good to see you, Barbara, you know, and she's smiling and I, I feed off of that as an instructor. I kind of like it. Um, you know, talking to Jan Tin Can is kind of difficult uh, for an expressive person. So I think we do monitor our room somewhat, but I, I, I also believe that that monitor is there for a reason and they do a great job. Um, um, I don't particularly care for hands you know, the little hands, and I do miss them as an instructor. I would prefer in most circumstances until we get over, you know, 100 people that people just unmute and ask questions um, because it, it allows us to have a more classroom <laughs> setting. <laughs> On that note, Byron. Uh-oh. Yeah. Yeah. Um, no, uh, we do have... Um, our, one of our alternate members who had a comment and oh please yeah so yeah I think we've given her access at this point so. see how that works you just didn't you interrupt Byron and he stops talking <laughs> yeah I, right um, it was well, no it just have to go right now I just wanted to let you know as you were making no. that statement um, I think it's Selena Dinglin. And now she's she's muted, but she can unmute if she wants to, or if you want, if if she wants to come back and raise her hand, she now can. She leave. doesn't have to. She can just. She doesn't. Unmute and stop talking. <laughs> she doesn't. But I just wanted to let you know that we can give her access as an alternate member because she had something that she had to say. Oh, good. Yeah. Byron, I'm going to make a motion, and let's let's see what happens with this motion. All right. I make the motion to change paragraph C of the language to state for a qualifying or non-elective continuing education classroom delivery course delivered through the use of technology where there are more than 20 students registered for the course. The provider will also use a monitor to verify identification of each student monitor active participation of each student and facilitate questions for the instructor. 
Any second on that? Second. Yep. Yeah. Great. Sorry, I can unmute. Second. Do we want to help? Yep. Yeah, I, I even saw you wave your hand. It wasn't a virtual hand, though, so I'm not <laughs> sure if I could recognize it. All right, I'm almost done beating on that. Ruben? Thank you. So, based off of that, it says more than 20 students, so I have 21. Yep. Got to get them on. More than 20. Yeah. Yep. Okay. And, and Ruben, that was always the language. That language yeah, no, didn't change. That. Yeah. I, I have one question and maybe for Jen or somebody that's my do we have an issue with people saying uh, we, we're not these classes aren't being monitored if there's you know 40 students and only one one instructor and one one monitor is there an issue or where we just that 20 was just a number that since we had the 20 students you needed a monitor we just popped up every for every 20 but is there is, have we had any grumblings from people saying that the you know classes are out of control? We need more monitors. Honestly, it, the discussion really came from earlier ESAC meetings. Um, so it was the experience of some of the earlier committee members that had brought this forward. Um, as we kind of after after COVID and after Zoom was embraced as a technology for teaching class teaching classes, and I think. Um, you know, people, the consensus of the committee is that we need to have a way to facilitate answering questions and, you know, making sure that the students weren't cooking their lunch and, you know, doing whatever. So really, it's just an involvement of the conversations that have come from the committee, I believe. Um, Can I add to that? May I add oh, to that? Sure. I think, too, um, it could have come from one of our larger providers where we have associations going in and, and bringing their members and those associations not having a monitor. And who's they're. Speaking? I'm sorry, who's speaking? Cindy. OK, great. Thank you. Sorry. No, it's OK. And as an instructor and there's 300 people in a Zoom class, an association has 25, and that monitor has disappeared. And I think that may have been where the issue came up, mm. you know, because it's very difficult, you know, to have 300 and the instructor having to see, you know, like Kara was saying, we can't see all of the students on Zoom, you know, and that may have been when it came up. Right, right. Perfect. That makes um, Mike? Yeah, um, Candy made a very good point uh, when when she asked what should have been the obvious question in the beginning was, what are we actually, what's actually happening out there? Are there complaints? Is there something happening? Um, you know, my standpoint is, um, there's a reason why we have a posted speed limit sign. Um, if we just tell people, hey, drive as fast as you feel you safely can, I promise you I'm going to drive faster than everyone else in this room. Um, because I think that I can. Um, now with that, the Autobahn's proven to be pretty safe, right? Um, and so if we're not hearing a whole lot, if there's not a whole lot of, of things out there, uh, then then maybe, uh, maybe Bill, there isn't a problem. Um, I think it was a, a great comment that she made. Um, and so I think it would come down to uh, a better answer to her question is, are we getting complaints? Are there students uh, making complaints to the commission, um, stating that, hey, I'm not getting what I'm what I'm paying for out of this. What else are we hearing? And if we're not hearing a whole lot, um, then maybe your motion bill is the way to go. That's all I got. I have a couple of comments to that, Mike, um, and I appreciated what Candy brought up also, but I, I can tell you, uh, you brought up complaints which I think is the natural direction. You know, do we get complaints and what are they? But I can tell you that we have education providers that will reach out to my team and anecdotally say, this is a problem for this other provider. Hmm. And we say, your okay. avenue 
or your mechanism for notifying us of that issue if we were to investigate is through a complaint and you need to you can file one and here's how and nobody will do it. Um, I have had this experience more than I can tell you. Um, so that is just, that's the nature of it. So we're not going to find out via complaints. And then the other thing, and I'll just say, is the nature of the student is if the course is easier to get through without having to be involved, that's the majority of your student at CE takers anyway. Um, it's unfortunate, but it is true. And so we're not, we don't really have a, a mechanism to collect that as true data. My soul hurts from that comment, Jen. I'm super sorry to say it, but I think, it's, it's, you know, you are all in this room because you are engaged. And, you know, there is an echelon of those license holders that are genuinely engaged. But yep. there are 200 and some odd thousand of them, and they're not all like you. They're not all in, engaged. I think to bring something up also, in my mind throughout this conversation, We've kind of been more talking about like the CE courses. That's just naturally what's been on my mind. But I want to acknowledge, since there is a motion on the table, in a later portion of the rule, uh, we talk about proctoring as it relates to a final exam. So we need to keep in mind maybe the distinction between qualifying courses and CE and a monitor to monitor, you know, those who are the courses that are our non-elective courses or our qualifying courses, pre-licensing courses. Um, what is your take on, we've removed proctoring language there. Is there something different that you wanna do with that area? Um, we do have a rule that requires the final exams for those courses to be closed book and closed note. Um, can a provider handle that on their own without the need for direction in a rule? If so, I have no, you know, this is not an opinion statement for me. This is just a discussion. And Good I also question. to bring up as we get further along, does anybody, you know, our providers by statute were required to publish exam pass rate data. Does anybody feel that removing a proctoring requirement would impact the pass rate data? And do you have any concerns about how that might impact a school as it relates to being published? So I just want to put these things out there so that you know that with the motion that you're making now, we might need to have more discussion. Sorry, Vanessa. No, it's okay. So I, just want, I, I, uh, I just need to add one thing to what Jen said, which is um, I get why you said it, but we we can't rely on unsubstantiated complaints that people are doing things. That's right. Oh, yes. yeah. So that, that, that's sorry. not really, I mean, I, I know it's hard to file a complaint and I understand all that, but I just need to point that Thank part you. out of that's not something that we would rely on in this discussion. I do also have a comment from um, Shalena, but I will, you tell me when I can read that. Bill, I didn't mean to interrupt you. Can I clarify oh, that, that I- That's okay. I, I know, I know. I was I, just I, gonna say, we. We need to get back to the motion on the table and yep, Jen, yep. what you brought yep. up is really important in the next discussion, but that that's going to come up in just a second. So I, I just want to direct us back to the motion. I know Thank Ruben you, has a, a question. Yep. Actually, it was a comment along the same lines. Uh, back to Bill's motion. I, I would rather have something in place and not need it than to need it and not have it. So I'm speaking in favor of that motion. I wanted to get back to that. Thank you. There we go. Thank you, Ruben. Yes, sir. Um, any I, other co comments on that particular motion the on the from, table? We have the one from Shalina, if I can read it real quick. Would you please? Yes. And she's your, she's an alternate and she's a very active alternate, which is great. Um, so she says, I instruct and monitor on average two to three classes a week. I can attest to having 50 plus students in a class and needing a monitor. As an instructor, I flip through screens as a habit as a former public school teacher. However, for someone who is not used who is not used to it and they are presenting, asking questions and engaging the classroom, it becomes difficult. Our association has taken the stance that we have a monitor for every 30 to 40 students. 
As an instructor, it's key that there are, is some help with larger classes as students who are distracted can disrupt the class when they are continuously asking questions on a discussion topic that has already happened. I can handle 20 to 30 by myself because I'm used to it, but not everyone can do that. I would definitely recommend at least one monitor for 40 students. So that's- every 40. And that's from Shalina? That's from Shalina, yeah. Shalina. Uh, and I wanna ask her a question if that's okay. It's probably more sarcastic. Uh, Shalina, uh, have you ever used mute all? Isn't that a wonderful button? Never mind. Well, she is muted, so she can't. Oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I don't mean that. But right in that management. OK, everybody calm down for a minute. Mute, mute all. Let's get everything under control. I'm sure as a classroom teacher, she's she's had to take control that way before. Uh, uh, and I don't I don't mean that sarcastically is the opposite. Yeah. Well, it, it kind of brings back to where I first thing, you know, uh, mentioned like each monitor holds like for the Zoom, in case of Zoom you know, it only holds 45 people. And then when right. it goes up to the next page, that's something hard to control. And perhaps yeah. instead of, you know, if you are against using the number to uh, put this on, like, you know, maybe put a words where it says however many that each monitor can hold. Because like when it goes over to the second page, third page, that's something, you know, being out of control for an for, uh, instructor to, you know, to look at it. And you know, if you have a like huge monitor, you will, it will appear as a bigger picture, so you, you'll see better. But if you have like if you have a smaller monitor, they're all crammed in, and you barely be able to see anybody. So little bitty squares. Right, right. So if yeah. you have like you know, wh however many each, you know, the, whether it's Zoom or the Microsoft Team meeting, I don't, I never use the Microsoft Team meetings. So I don't know how many that holds, but uh, for you know, in case of Zoom, they they only hold the 45 people in the first page. So maybe perhaps limit that to however many number of people they hold in first page. And if it goes over to the second page, maybe we need a second monitor for those. And so the current that, motion, go ahead, sorry. That goes back to Bill's uh, statement on technology changes too. So unfortunately, I mean, I guess we could have a really big monitor if it goes to where you can have 80 people per page. But I, I agree with you, Kara. Those boy, those squares get really small to be able to see people in in situations like that. I kind of like it when it's a smaller amount per page because uh, I can see people uh, personally. Uh, Vanessa. I was just saying, so the motion on the table is to just strike the for every 20 students, right? <laughs> yeah. um, yes, participating in the course. And the monitor. Yeah. Do we have any further discussion on that? Then can we bring it to a vote? All right. All in favor of striking the language uh, for every 20 students participating in the course from C1. Um, um, I, shall we raise a hand? Is that OK? Yeah, that'd be helpful. OK, raise your hand, please. For four. Strike to strike that language. I can see only three of us. Uh, Ruben, are you raising your hand as well? That makes four. Yeah, maybe you guys could see more. You That's funny it. that we're having this conversation. All opposed to that? Oh, wait. No, three. Three. So is that, what is that total? Four to three? Uh, six to three. Yeah. Six to three. Uh, motion carries. And this is proposal, so... This conversation gets to happen again. The sure. other, the other part, just just for your situational awareness, is this will also be presented to the inspector committee. Um, their meeting is next week, um, so we would present this rule with your recommendations, whatever those may be. Um, and so, depending on what they say, it's possible you might see this again. Um, okay. So just, cool. just be aware of that. Yeah. Without proposal, you're right. Right. Perfect. Uh, thank you for that. Uh, should we go um, on to um, H course examinations? Is that where we need to land next? Bill's giving me a thumbs up. Thanks, Bill. Assuming y'all were okay with um, the change from check the photo ID to just verify the identification. I think that was direct from your language from last meeting, but just I'm seeing head nod. So okay, thank you for that. 
Yes. Okay. And that's on. Is that under H or is that someplace that I missed? That was um, under B1, um, B1 above the section we were just talking about. But it's, oh, goody. Yeah. All right. That was Hang on. Change. Oh, yeah. Thank you for that. Do you see where she's talking about the provider must verify the identification of each student at class? Correct, and that's what we had recommended last time for the language yep. to be changed to. Yeah, we OK there? Man, verify, verify. OK. Is there not being done? <laughs> I'm just. <laughs> Who asked that question? <laughs> <laughs> Go on record. Um, you know, that actually gave me a, a run for my money, and I'm glad that you brought it up. The difference between check and I, uh, photo ID and verify each student is who they say that they are. And uh, I, I wonder if um, if they have a link and they click on it and they open up in in the, the meeting that way. If you're using um, 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 some kind of electronic platform, I wonder if that's verification. Right, it's a funny word verify or or if you know that person because you've had them in class before, does that create verification? Mm -hmm. I mean, that one's probably a little bit easier, but um, I suppose someone could share their their link so that, that someone else they could pay someone to take their class for them. Um, and then it would be difficult to verify. Mm -hmm. They would do that. Mm -hmm. Funny verb though, verify versus check. Uh, do you want to have conversation? Are you okay with that? That's good. And I'll just add that um, that that verb is is actually used in other places mm -hmm. in Google as well. So it's currently in in Google language. Ver verify is in there. Yeah. Yeah. To go along with identification, I guess verify identification. Yep, that's Byron. I can see his bald head from here. Um, would that be verification? I guess it mm -hmm. would be, wouldn't it? <laughs> or something. I got a thumbs up for Mike. Yep, I recognize that bald head from anywhere. <laughs> Great. All right. The things that I, I actually have notes on that on the side of my paper. Uh, check his, his bald head. That should be verification enough. Um, the course examinations H is where we saw some uh, uh, modifications as well. And uh, um, where's that language? Could you slide that up a little bit, please? Whoever's driving that boat. There it is. Go down. Yeah. A little bit okay. more warmer, warmer. Sorry, it's hearing that. That's OK. Um, yeah, where are you located? Course examinations uh, require an unweighted passing score of 70% and then strike out be proctored by a member of the provider, faculty, staff, or third party uh, proctor acceptable to the commission who, and also to strike out, is present at the test site or able to monitor the student through the use of technology acceptable to the commission and has positively also uh, stricken, has positively identified that the student taking the examination is the student registered for uh, and who took the course. So there goes verification, I suppose. And um, um, maybe we should stop there and then tackle five in a minute. Or should this all go together? Well, and I think it fits well together. OK. A bit of and then, um, explanation for that, if you don't mind, Byron. Um, oh, please. So so this section again was striking, uh, striking out the uh, proctoring language. Um, we originally had some some I think when we originally looked at this had some different language where you see five right now but when we went yeah. further on the rule that actually applies specifically to inspectors this is the language that they used um, in in that rule so we mirrored it and that should take the place of the essentially verification of ID that's right above it and in, into the provider must administer the, the exam under conditions that ensure the student taking the exam is a certain student who registered for and took the course. So the idea of that was to, to kind of mirror um, the language and elsewhere in the rule, but then also cover that that verifying of ID that's up above in the, the section. 
think about that. Great. Thank you for that. Yeah. And so adding that language and then striking out the examples of the verification of of the uh, um, identification or 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 who can proctor. Those are the proctors, employees and librarians and college and university administrators. So striking that language. So this all goes together then, I suppose. Um, let's open this for comment. I like the changes that staff has proposed. We've got to remember that this is not getting their license. This is showing that they've got a competency in the qualifying course that they've taken. They still have to take the state and the national exam, which are highly proctored and highly secured in taking that. It doesn't change that process. And this makes it easier on the people in the state of Texas trying to get their education to actually pat, get through the exam without going through an erroneous or hard proctoring course. Great, thank you. Uh, Mike? I mean, Bill said it pretty well. Uh, I agree, I think staff did a great job um, with the proposal uh, and meets the intent uh, and it's well done. Other comments? Byron, I'll make I'll move. We uh, accept four and five as presented by staff. Well, I I want to make some comments. Oh, sorry, Byron wants to comment. <laughs> I'll hold that motion for a moment. If you don't mind. <laughs> um, I just had a I just had some concerns about. Uh, I think five is now impossible to do. Impossible to do because proctoring is a move is removed. I mean, how can how can you how can you ensure that the person who's taking the course is taking the exam if you're not proctoring them taking the exam and then the other concern that i had is if there's no proctor then that makes h1 uh, a concern all final examinations must be closed book so i would think if you're going to remove proctoring you got to remove the language that says that the the book is closed and notes are are i mean because you can't ensure if you if you take the proctor out of the room staring at people while they take their exam, then someone's going to open a book. And look at answers or look at their notes or something like that. Um, and uh, we did that. What year uh, um, did we have where uh, students could to uh, take their exams with cl uh, open books? We didn't clarify the delivery method standards, which is when we did this also until I think it was 2016. 2016. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, 20 some somewhere right around in there. The rule changed 2016. Right. And, and so at, at that point, there was no rule before then that said that books had to be closed. I honestly don't recall what was there, what was in place before. Um, right. But I, but I don't believe that proctoring at all was a thing. Was 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 then, yeah. yeah. Boy, I sure did like going to a closed book. It uh, as a as a classroom instructor at the time, when students were not required to keep their books closed, tests took a really long time, and we'd have to wait uh, uh, for that. And so I I wonder. And I see you, Mike. Um, I wonder if there's any correlation with having that statement if from 2016 uh, that books must be closed if there's been any change in in pass rates and and verification. You know, if we're going to remove that, will that change pass rates, Mike? Yeah, to your comment, uh, the, the first part, um, how they're able to ensure they are the, the ones taking the test. I know the uh, the online asynchronous, um, a lot of the providers already have that built in. Um, certain questions. How do they that do they that, that if answer. you don't mind? Yeah. Oh, uh, that there's they questions answer. they have to answer. Uh, you know, what's a you know, zip code, uh, whatever is, whenever you register for the course, there's demographic questions that a random person wouldn't know. Um, so they could verify without seeing somebody's face unless that's an odd chance that somebody who knows absolutely everything about you is also willing to take your test for you. Um, but at that, that point, I mean, yes. yeah, I mean, you could now deep fake an AI version of yourself and 
and do it with a photo, I guess, if you're going to go that far. Um, so it is doable. Um, and if Good it's point. in person, then they're right in front of you. You you, yeah. you verified who they are. Um, and then to the the point, uh, your, your second point of open book, closed book, um, I suppose we could look to see if there's been a difference. I don't think there has been a vast difference in pass rates. Um, but I'm going to get back to Bill's comment and, you know, does it really matter? Because um, in the end, they know that their real estate licensing exam is going to be proctored and it's going to be uh, no books allowed. That's what they're studying for. Uh, if they choose to do otherwise between points A and B, then that's on the student. Um, so I don't see it being an issue. Great, thank you for that. I wonder, I wonder, and you guys can, um, you know, please fight with me on this. Uh, if we approved the removal of the proctor, if we could also strike all final examinations must be closed book. Because I don't think there's a way to, especially, um, and thanks for the big words, uh, uh, Mike, asynchronous. I mean, there's no way to be able to prove that, right, that the book is closed unless there's a proctor. And so we have a conflict right there, I think, between the two. Um, and so, oh yeah, please. So this is Cindy again, sorry. <laughs> um, Thank you. Last week I was teaching um, at, with some young, young agents and we were talking about the proctoring issue and they're, you know, they're all tech savvy and more so than I am. And they were telling me that when they do the proctoring, they're having to show with their camera underneath their computer and all around I'll them, that too. you know, that there is nothing open. Mm -hmm. And I thought, oh, wow, we've really gone a long way from when, you know, we first started all of this. And so, you know, they were kind of complaining that they had to go to that extreme to do it. Um, yeah, some people do this, right, where you have to sit there and go like yeah. this and move junk around. Yeah, I've seen yeah. that. Yeah. So. But I'm liking what, you know, uh, Bill said and what Mike said, too, you know, it'll come out in the in the testing uh, when they do sit for the actual licensing, you know, because they can't take anything in with them. Except their brains. Yeah. Uh oh. Um, OK. <laughs> I, I think Candy wanted to make I think Candy wanted to make a motion. All right, Byron, you ready? I, I will one, I'll, once again. I'll move. We accept four and five as uh, as written by staff. I'll second that. Yep, second. Any further discussion? We have a second. All in favor of Candy's motion to accept the way that this has been amended as it's read, please raise your hand. Aye. I can't see how many people that is. Eight. The motion passed. All right. Uh, those op opposed, I'm going to oppose that. Because I want that uh, um, uh, closed book added, but it, that's just me. So is this going back also to the yeah, other committee? So all of all these of this changes, you'll, yeah, will all go to the inspector committee okay. as well. Perfect. Yeah. Let me ask a question on that. So it goes back to the inspector committee and they get to say what they want to say. And we've got a truck commission meeting in November. Will we be bringing this to the truck commission meeting in November? If the other committee says something, do we get that information prior to that meeting? What what's the logistics between today and the meeting in November? Right. So if the inspectors see it and love it, then it's going to go forward in November. And love it. I mean, who couldn't, right? Um, but if they don't, <laughs> if they don't, um, and, you know, they, they may not, um, then it's likely, well, I think then it's coming back to USAC in January. Because one, um, yeah. if they'll need, like, let's say they don't want it all, at all, then we're going to have to do some I'm not going to say significant, but definitely more draft language. And then if they, you know, I don't know how they're going to feel on, on this topic in general. Um, 
But if they want to make some changes, let's say they're like, no, you know what, actually, yeah, we think it'd be better at 50 students or something to that effect, then I think it's going to end up being just a bigger conversation. And maybe they do ultimately separate out or maybe they have some insight on this rule and you guys hear it and you're like, wow, we never thought about that. So um, it's a, it's somewhat useful to have two committees considering it, but we also know it's two different industries. Um, so it's a little bit of a TBD. If everything is the same, it's going in November. If it's not, then it's going to come back here in January for more discussion is the short answer to okay. that. After I gave you the long answer. Thank you. You gave me the long and the short, but I appreciate it. Perfect. And when is their meeting, Vanessa? Monday. One week. One week. Okay. All right, inspectors. Cool. Thank you for that. Um, does that leave us with um, future dates? Uh, well, so there's uh -oh. there's the remainder of the changes. Oops, I beg your pardon. I skipped past that. Yeah, it, it's um, just 535.70 and then 535.72. Yep. These should be pretty uh, straight. Okay. But, Thanks uh, for that. 535.70 is just removing, simply removing the definition of proctor from the rules since we don't need that any longer. And then 535.72, this is the inspector uh, language. Um, so this is what they'll be noting in particular, I think, but um, the language removes that proctor language. You'll see that administered language that I mentioned earlier. Um, I think that's the only change, yeah. Okay, so just sorry for that. I appreciate that catch. Um, can we make a motion to approve both of those? at the same time, or do we need to do them separately? You can do it all together. All right. Anybody want to make a motion as such? I make the motion to approve both changes at the same time. There we go, second. Second. Any comments? Discussion? All in favor? Look at that. I know. Okay. How about that? I mean, it only makes sense. I mean, if you're going to approve the other ones, that you you clean those up that way. So, uh, great. Thank you for that. Now, Abby. Now. Now. Now is the time. <laughs> All right. Future dates. How do those dates look uh, for you? Uh, January sixth, and then the proposed date of April seventh, July seventh, and September eighth. Um, the future date on um, January sixth, we had already agreed upon, right? Is that still a good date? Vanessa, does that make you happiest? January um, 6th? You know, I think so. I want to say school goes back on Tuesday the 7th, but we can all make it work if that's the date that works for everybody. Yeah, okay. Should I not say that to the other parents? Of the <laughs> <laughs> We just might have all of our children present. Is that okay? Sure. <laughs> That'd be great. We love that's kids. What, that's what mute all is for. <laughs> Does that work in your life? We may need a monitor for that. <laughs> Good thing, yes, yeah. you, yes, you uh, I mean, what's uh do we have any alternate dates for that one or no? Oh no, I haven't looked at any other okay. coming out of the seven. Yeah. If everyone's good with the six, I think we can all make it work. I just want to be mindful of anyone else who has anything. Um, I'm also, uh, I think this would also be a place to bring up any um, agenda items for these future meeting dates. So um, once you settle on the six or a different date, then we can talk a little bit about future agenda items. Okay. Anybody want to re reject the January 6th date? Silence is um, um, uh, accepting. All right, let's keep the January 6th date. Uh, do you want to talk about agenda items there instead of looking at the proposed dates first? Let's. Um, yeah. um, go ahead. I was going to say you're going to have some some new folks, so you may want to look at your your future dates in January. The proposed date? Yeah. Okay. 
I mean, I looked at those on my calendar and they, they seem to work, so I don't see why they should be a problem to anybody else. <laughs> Good, I'm, I'm glad people are laughing at that. They worked for me, so, you know, whatever. I think they um, may not change at all, but. Okay, do you, do you want to talk about um, agenda items for January 6th then? Yeah, we can do that. Of course, there's always the potential that we have to readdress what we just did. Yeah. All right. At a um, minimum, we'll be taking comments. Right. There'll be training, there'll be advisory committee training, and there'll be elections. Bill, are you going to campaign? I am not campaigning. I didn't campaign this time. I'm not even sure I'll be on the committee. I put my name up, but I may not get selected. So who knows? All right. Fair enough. Um, yeah. Uh, Jen Wheeler, do you have anything that you want to put under that for us to look at? Yeah, we have a minute. I'm sorry, Byron. What was that? Engaged, Jennifer. <laughs> <laughs> she was with the people here. Yeah. <laughs> Apparently, Bill, me either on that last comment, but... Uh, is there anything, uh, Jen, that you would want to see in our agenda on, on January 6th that you want us to look at? Um, well, I appreciate the ask, but I don't have anything um, that I'm spearheading at the moment. Um, by the way, the reference to engaging activities is in 53572 regarding the non-elective courses, which you would be uh more intimately familiar with because you work on them every once in a while i get to teach one is that where it says engaged i knew it was someplace in there uh thanks for that i'll read it i guess it would be in here wouldn't it we're gonna stay engaged <laughs> i'll i'll look it up thanks for that jen you're welcome my my aspiration is to be able to quote quote um a trek rule like abby that's not you should have <laughs> <laughs> that bar's way up there yes, hey yes. we can all shoot for something um um okay well then you know a potential readdress of um uh, 535.6 and training and elections is what i have then for monday uh jan 6th and then we'll just kind of leave it for there you know if there's comments or anything like that i i suppose after next monday we'll know how much work uh, we'll have on 535.6, zero. Yeah, and and if, if something comes up in the interim, you can send it to um, Abby and me and we can run it through Bill. You're like, oh, wait, you know what we should talk about in January? Perfect. I just made a lot of that. Mm -hmm. Bill, do you have um, any party comments? I think no, I think we're good. I'll I'll make sure that uh, the International Airstream Rally doesn't conflict with this next time, so I don't have to take it from Pennsylvania and Airstream. But other than that, I'm having fun. So thank you for covering for me, Brian. Oh, you would be very welcome. I hope I did a good job. I've never led a meeting like this before. You so, done well. Um, yeah. Well, as long as we get to the bottom of the page, and I mean, we always have checks and balances, or. So thanks for the catch on the the two um, uh, 0.70 and 0.72 that I missed. I appreciate that. Uh, anything else? Do we have any issues coming up with any of our other courses that y'all foresee? <laughs> oh, <laughs> <I'm> just, <laughs> no. that, that, just, that was my question. Is we kind of quietly did it real quick, but she's uh, like not yet. Okay. Yeah. We, we will circle back to that, but I think from a, a little bit larger perspective, and so we need a little time to prep. Okay. Okay. Then do we adjourn? All right. Meetings adjourned. Thank you. Bye, Bye everyone. Bye. Thank Good you. to see y'all. Bye.